Any Great. other uh, like little hints on the reward track? We want? might sprinkle a few transmog tokens right, on there. That's, <laughs> I think, that's what I think the players wanted to hear. Yeah. Welcome to Forge in Eternum, where we talk all things New World. Today I'm here with Patrick, our season's design lead, and James, a narrative designer on the team. We're going to do a deep dive on season two today. Uh, so let's start with you, Patrick. Give yep. us a little overview of the theme of the season. Yeah, so season two is Blood of the Sands. We're taking players back to Brimstone. Uh, we're building on everything we did with season one, but doubling down on a lot of that. So you're going to be running around Brimstone Sands, searching for these relics, uh, and we're really tying into that sandworm theme throughout the whole season. You see that in the narrative, in our season event, the season pass, uh, and it'll get you really ready to go fight the sandworm. Sounds pretty awesome. Tell us a little bit, James, about the inspiration of the narrative and what it's all about. Yeah, well, believe it or not, this all started with a lore note <laughs> um, about uh, the Blood of the Sand sect. And um, originally we were thinking of th these would be like Dune Raiders kind of, you know, and they, they had like, they all had like red regalia that they wore and like, um, an outsider was sort of watching them and like watching them interact with a sandworm uh, in a kind of crazy way. Um, and uh, as we dug into the idea of that, like we're like, hey, there's something there about the blood of the sand sect and like having a relationship with these worms. Um, and as we dug into it more, like we're like, you know, the interesting part is like, hey, there's one sandworm now, like, so what happened? And then like, what are the big stakes? Cause like, I think that's one of the things we wanted to do is go really big with this season, like summer blockbuster feeling. So um, what kind of big stakes could we have with, with the sandworms? And they're like, well, there's one now and that's super destructive already. So like, what if there's like someone who's wanting to unleash dozens of them or hundreds of them on Eternum? Um, and so that's that's kind of where things started. Um, and I think we we all dug in, like we got into the idea of like, you know, wh what happened to the worms? Like, why have they been dormant for millennia? The idea was like, if they're, the, the big threat then is like that, you know, someone, maybe someone uh, from this sect was trying to revive the sandworms and unleash, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of them on Eternum. Um, and originally we were thinking like, maybe there was a, a faction split or something like that. But then we realized that like, you know, maybe someone, you know, this clan has been dormant along with the worms for like thousands of years. Why is there only one worm left? Um, or, or that has reawoken um, and started digging into the lore of that and the idea that maybe someone's been trying to revive the clan, um, the, the Blood of the Sand sect. That's cool. Yeah. I love that we went a little more epic with this season. Is that something intentional, Patrick? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so like James said, we kind of went for this big summer blockbuster style quest line. Uh, a lot of, you know, explosions, running from sandworms, chasing you, all that. Uh, and a large part of that is the enemies you're going to fight in the quest line. So we heard the feedback pretty loud and clear from season one that the faceless fight could have used some improvements. And uh, the way we're tackling that is by instancing those encounters. So there's two big encounters this quest line. Both are instanced and both have this epic, grandiose feel. And uh, the second instance has probably one of my favorite cinematics uh, in the game, which is all I'll say on that. Cool. Well, let's dig into the actual uh, features and mechanics of the season. So there's three big things this season. There's the narrative, like we had last season, or War Track, and then something new we'll talk about, the season trial. Let's start with the narrative. Uh, James, tell me a little bit about, like, what are some of the highlights or what are your favorite parts of the narrative, uh, obviously without any spoilers <laughs> for, for people watching? Yeah, well, you know, um, as Patrick said, like, one of our big goals was to, to go epic with it. So I think just overall, like, I think players are going to really love the art and, like, the, the space is, like, they're all... There's like a lot of new feeling spaces, a lot of new things that they're going to enjoy. Um, like that, it's it's very much like um, I want to say like an Indiana Jones adventure across the desert. Um, so I love that that vibe that that we went with. And you know, like personally, I like I like the. I like the uh, the small stories as well, like you know where it's more relationship driven, and like you know Sky in season one, and having that, you know, um, sort of revenge plot against Faceless and the things that were taken from her, and trying to get it back, and you know uh, her relationship and what happened with her her lover. Um, but like we also dig like the big, you know, action adventures, uh, which is what this turned out to is really great. Um, so that's one. The second is, um, you know, we heard uh, good feedback from the players on the Silver Crows. They really dig them. You know, they love Grace, of course. Um, Dog picked up an interesting like, yeah. big following like for having like the least lines of all the other characters. Um, so we are uh, adding a new crow um, this season, and uh, she's awesome. Uh, you know, I'll spoil the fact that she is a bard. Um, so you got to have a bard in 
your crew, right? <laughs> a little music. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Um, and the third thing, you know, like, and Patrick mentioned it, is that like we got fe good feedback on the cutscenes that we were you know, sort of introducing in season one. Um, I think players really liked that, so we leaned in really heavy there. And I think there's like at least two cutscenes that came out super nice and really we're really happy with. Yeah, and the other piece there's the rewards you get from this quest line. Uh, it really sets you up nicely to go and uh, take on the sandworm when you're ready for that. So I think we took extra care to really theme those rewards around that encounter and make sure that players are ready to go once they're done with the quest line. Would you say it's like sort of like a beastly encounter with the sandworm? Yeah, beastly encounter, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of beast war. <laughs> All right, well let's jump into the reward track a little bit. Sure. Uh, Patrick, any changes, especially around progression for the reward track that yeah. players should be ready for? Yeah, so we've been taking a look at the season one data uh, and it took a little longer to hit that level 100 than we would have liked. So with season two, we went in and optimized the journey. Uh, what that meant is we really made sure there was a strong solo path at every single chapter. So season one had that solo path, but it might have been a little more difficult at some chapters. Season two, we added extra journey tasks where we needed to to make sure that you could get through that journey uh, without really doing content that might have pushed you out of your comfort zone. So uh, chapters two, four, and five all have additional tasks added to them. And we also rebalance the experience in the journey. So it's going to provide you a good chunk more experience than season one. So it'll get, get you even deeper uh, into your season pass. Uh, and then we also added new activities for season two. So those are largely themed around Brimstone. You're gonna go, you know, squish five scorpions, go <laughs> gather some Prisma Blooms, uh, uh, any typical thing you might do in Brimstone. So pretty happy with how that's come out. And uh, hopefully players find all those easier to progress and more rewarding. Awesome. And how about on the reward side of the reward track? Any changes there? James? Well, you know, I did drop the fact that <laughs> <laughs> this is a, you know, you do get some beastly good rewards out. Of <laughs> um, so we get, we do prep the players um, for you know what's to come, like the the type of fights to come, and um, yeah. they'll be. Very... Any other uh, like little hints <laughs> on the reward track? Maybe? We might sprinkle a few transmog tokens right, on there. That's, <laughs> I think, that's what I think the players wanted to hear. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about the, the latest and newest feature here, seasonal trials. So yeah. uh, actually, let's start with you, James. Tell me a little yeah. bit about the sort of the lore and the story of the seasonal trial before sure. we jump into the mechanics. Yeah, no worries. So the, uh, along the quest line, the player finds out that there's a group of, uh, of people that are trying to, that have found an ancient chamber that was used to actually hatch these, these sandworms. Um, and of course, they naturally hatch in the desert. But um, back in the day, you know, the, the ancient blood of the sand sect had used this originally to, they, they really revered the worms. And so this is where they um, helped uh, keep the perfect conditions for hatching eggs. Um, and sort of communing, if you will, like there was there's some lore that says that like they were actually able to sort of talk to the worms in, at some level. So this is where they sort of like communed with the worms and like took care of their their eggs and so forth. But there's a new group that's come in and they're sort of, you know, perverting the old practices and wanting to control hatch and control the worms um, for their own nefarious reasons. And then tell us a little bit about like what's the mechanic of this? How does it play out? Tell us. Yeah, so season trials uh, at the core, they're ten player instance encounters. So it's a uh, it's a wave based encounter. So there's going to be three waves of fodder enemies. You go in, uh, they escalate in difficulty as you fight them, and then eventually you reach the mini boss, the horde master. Mm -hmm. uh, he uses a hatchet and he summons these flame grunts that players need to control and manage. If they don't kill the flame grunts. Then they are going to uh, jump into these lava pools and come out reforged, bigger, badder, dealing more damage. They're going to be very difficult for you to deal with. Uh, once you slay the Horde Master, or if you slay the Horde Master, you move on to uh, Hadi Shazar, the Keeper of Flame. This is a boss that utilizes a lot of uh, crowd control mechanics and positioning. So players need to navigate around the arena, put out fires, avoid waves of fire that crash down on them, uh, and kill a living bomb that might target one of your team members and might wipe the entire raid if you don't deal with that. So bring a bow or two. Um, the entire trial came out pretty good. Uh, it's very fun to fight through. It's very quick, which is nice. And our goal there was that this is a nice foil to the sandworm. Sandworm is a challenging encounter where you need 20 people who know what they're doing and are coordinated to take it down. With the hatchery, it's an easier encounter. You can find nine other strangers, take this on and get your rewards. So hop in, do the encounter, hop out, uh, you know, more casual friendly. Nice. Uh, and in terms of like length, so you said it's super quick? Target time was about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. So I'm sure our speedrunners out there will optimize yeah. that time and get that down, but excited to see where they land. Yeah, I think that's a great place for it, right? Yeah. Give players something they can do sort of more bite-sized. And Absolutely. this will use the new raid group functionality, This correct? will use raid group, yep. 
Awesome. Uh, any other sort of uh, things coming out with the season that you want to highlight before we call? Yeah, during uh, season two, players get to re-engage with the summer medley fair, so that'll be coming back. Very fun holiday that I love, fishing up the Eternum Sturgeon. And we also added a new song called Ya, which is uh, very, very difficult. Uh, if you perfect that, you get the Guitar Hero title, which is exciting. Uh, and then we also have the season two event, which is Siege of Sulphur. So uh, those sandworm eggs we've talked so much about, they're gonna appear up in the world. A dune walker is transporting them and his cart breaks down. And uh, if you help him defend his eggs, he will give you some great beast board gear to compensate that and maybe a fun hat. Oh, I like the hat. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today on this deep dive for season two. Uh, please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the show and we'll keep doing it. Uh, and for our community question of the day, we'd love to hear what are you most excited about? What changes or additions in season two are you most excited about? Thanks and see you in a turn. Uh, so while we're allowing people to get into matches quicker with this great new feature, uh, we're also going to make some changes to OPR, some adjustments to make it play a little better, a little maybe more strategic. <laughs>